All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here on Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Hope everybody's doing well. Today's topic is uh, a potentially intimidating one. It's even maybe a little intimidating to us because it's not a commonplace, but it is a really important topic. It's going to be part of our mechanical ventilation series, an advanced topic, and it's going to be on a mode of mechanical ventilation, a mode called APRV, or Airway Pressure Release Ventilation. We're going to dive into all things APRV. Quick disclaimer per usual, none of this is intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Hang out till the end of the video or look in, uh, sorry, video or podcast, or look in the episode's description uh, to check out the full disclaimer. And then a couple shameless plugs. We can't help, help ourselves. We're sorry. We're excited about things, uh, but we have a Patreon page. The stuff Study guide for this video, as well as practice questions, and uh, really kind of every other day uh, posts on different public health and medical education things on there. Check it out. We have a weekly newsletter that's more focused on public health and emerging infectious disease, uh, and we also obviously have a YouTube channel as well as uh, podcast platforms. All that's linked in the episode's description. We'd love for you to check out some of that other stuff. No further ado, shameless plugs done into APRV. So what is APRV? Um, this is a mode of mechanical ventilation, again, that's not super common. Uh, we don't tend to use it that much in our day-to-day -day practice, but you will come across it, and it might be something that becomes more um, prevalent as time goes on. But APRV stands for Airway Pressure Release Ventilation. And it's a mode of mechanical ventilation that provides actually continuous positive airway pressure with intermittent brief releases to facilitate ventilation and CO2 removal. We just want to say that again because this is uh, the foundational principle which will make more sense as we go on. It provides continuous positive airway pressure with intermittent brief releases to facilitate ventilation and CO2 removal. It was originated as um, this uh, idea that it might have more lung protective, kind of open lung strategy, keeping alveoli recruited, all that good stuff. And it does allow for a patient to take spontaneous breaths throughout the respiratory cycle, even during the high pressure phases, which are things we'll talk about, uh, with some thought that that improves patient comfort and reduces sedation needs. The summary statement on evidence here is evidence is kind of inconclusive which with where this is best used we're going to talk a little bit about that evidence um so some of the claims here are claims based on the um physiologic rationale for aprv rather than kind of a robust randomized control trial evidence base but we'll point that stuff out as we go through so how does aprv work well, the first concept to think about is it involves actually two different pressure levels, a P high and a P low. And you set these. The P low is often zero, right? Zero centimeters of water. And the P high is something that you'll set, and we'll talk more about that. Because what you're going to do is the patient is going to spend most of their time at P high, which means most of the respiratory cycle is um, get the ventilator is giving the patient the pressure you set for P high. And the thought is that that maintains alveolar recruitment and also helps oxygenation. But at regular intervals, which we'll get into, the ventilator will briefly drop the pressure to the P low for a short amount of time. And by dropping from P high to P low, you're going to essentially have that patient increase their expiration, exhalation, which will help with their ventilation, allow for CO2 removal. And we'll talk more about this. This, this will all kind of start to add up as we go through things here. Okay, so the concept is a patient spends most of their time at this high inspiratory pressure, this P high. And at certain intervals that we'll get into that you set, the ventilator drops them down to a lower pressure, a P low, to allow them to exhale and allow that CO2 to be removed. And the second part of this concept is the time, because in, in addition to a P high and P low, you're going to set a T high and a T low. The T high is the duration the patient is at their P high. Okay, we want to say this again, because the, these terms are all kind of starting to overlap. You're going to set a pressure high, that's an inspiratory pressure, and then you're going to set a T high. The T high is the amount of time the patient spends at P high. And this might be something like four to six seconds, okay? You're then gonna set a T low. This is the amount of time the patient spends at, you guessed it, the 
Pilo, and this is often a lot shorter. It's often a very brief. It might be something like 0.5 to 1 seconds. So now let's start to tie these together. You said a P high and a P low. Okay, let's just make something up. We said the P low is zero. Let's just say the P high is, I don't know, 20, um, which is maybe not super realistic, but the P high is 20, the P low is zero. The T high is, let's say the T high is five seconds and the T low is one second. So what essentially the ventilator is gonna do in APRV is it's going to put the patient at P high, that 20 centimeters of water that you set for five seconds and after five seconds, it's going to drop the patient to the P low, that zero centimeters of water that you set. You set the P high and the P low, and it's going to put them at P low for the T low, which we set is one second. So for one second, they'll be at P low, and then the ventilator will go back to P high. You set the P high at 20, so they're at an inspiratory pressure at 20. You set the T high at five seconds, so they're at that P high for their T high. They're at 20 for five seconds. After that five seconds, again, the ventilator drops the inspiratory pressure to P low, which is set at zero, and they'll stay at P low for the T low, the time low which you set, which you made one second. So for P low, for T low, the P low is zero, the T low is one second, so they're going to be at zero for one second after that one second's out, then it goes back to the P high for 20 for the duration that is T high for five seconds before it drops back down to the P low, which is zero for the duration T low, which is one second. And the cycle goes round and round and round. Uh, we hate to be repetitive and repeated over and over, but this is uh, confusing with the verbiage used and also critically important. Okay, so you set the P high, the P low, the T high and the T low, and the ventilator cycles through those. The other thing that this allows, which we did have mention, is the patient is allowed to spontaneously breathe throughout the respiratory cycle. So although the ventilator is um, cycling from P high to P low, and how it decides when to cycle is based on what you set for the T high and the T low, but throughout this whole time, the patient can take their own spontaneous breaths. So if I'm a patient and I want to take an additional breath, I just take a breath and the ventilator lets them do that, okay? And there's some argument that that helps with comfort, um, decreases sedation, all that kind of stuff. So it does allow for spontaneous breaths even while the ventilator is kind of walking them through from P high to P low, back to P high to P low, back to P high to P low for the duration that is T high to T low. So typical APRV settings, what do we usually set these different things at? Um, if you're watching the video, we have parameter, initial setting, and then some notes, but we'll also kind of verbally um, walk you, walk everybody through it. So the PI is typically set anywhere from 20 to 30 centimeters of water. You can think of this kind of like a plateau pressure in conventional modes. This is meant to maintain a degree of alveolar recruitment. So it's an inspiratory pressure um, that you're setting, and this is the PI, the highest pressure that that patient's alveoli will feel. So usually 20 to 30 centimeters of water is a typical starting P high. And then the P low tends to be started at zero centimeters of water. And this allows for that pressure release that allows them to go from a high inspiratory pressure down to a low inspiratory pressure to then help them blow off cc's of air or tidal volume to then ventilate to improve their carbon dioxide. The typical T high usually is four to six seconds. This is the time in which the patient is held at that P high. A longer T high does improve mean airway pressure and can improve oxygenation because they're at a higher pressure for a longer period of time. The T low is usually, you know, 0.5 to 1 seconds. And again, the T low is the time in which the ventilator lets the patient be in their P low or their low pressure or that zero centimeters of water. This must be short enough to prevent full exhalation. Why? So when you go from P high to P low, you're essentially letting that patient exhale. But you don't really want them to fully exhale because if they fully exhale, that can lead to de-recruitment. So you don't want the T low to be a duration of time that allows for full exhalation. You can look at kind of the expiratory flow curve and you want it to be a little shorter than full exhalation to avoid de-recruitment. And then you also are going to set the FiO2 which usually start 100% and titrate down um, to get to a, you know adequate SpO2 goal. But in, um, in APRV, 
And the four settings that are probably going to be unique and somewhat confusing for people that have not done it before are going to be the P high and the P low. P high, 20 to 30 centimeters of water. P low, zero centimeters of water. The T high and the T low. T high, usually four to six seconds. T low, usually 0.5 to one second, with the goal being to not allow full expiration before you cycle back to the P high. All right, that's a lot. Hopefully that made sense. We tried to repeat things, you know, 89 times uh, with the hope that it would be less confusing rather than more confusing, but let us know. All right, possible indications for APRV. When could you think about using it? And remember, we said, you know, the evidence here is uh, vague at best. It might be helpful for some things, but we don't really know. So we did put this disclaimer, no strong evidence for utility of APRV, but there are some smaller trials. These smaller trials have focused on things like ARDS, acute respiratory stress syndrome. Um, there's some people out there using APRV for ARDS. Refractory hypoxemia, not responsive to conventional ventilation because you're keeping these pressures, uh, these patients, for longer periods of time in a higher inspiratory pressure, that P high, uh, which can help with oxygenation. Patients who benefit from spontaneous breathing, right? We said that during APRV, the ventilator lets patients take their own breaths as well. So if a patient is having a lot of ventilator desynchrony, some people think that uh, this mode actually helps with ventilator synchrony by allowing patients to take spontaneous breaths. And then there's an idea that this might be a more lung protective strategy in certain patients. So that's a consideration too. Uh, uh, but again, no super strong evidence in any of these, at least at the time of this video recording. Contraindications are arguably more important because you can do harm with this mode of ventilation. Okay, Patients with severe obstructive lung disease, they don't have the ability to adequately ventilate in APRV. Right? We came out with a video on mechanical ventilation strategies in obstructive lung disease. Uh, definitely check that out if you have an interest in this topic. Um, because as we know, patients with obstructive lung disease have a really prolonged expiratory phase. They need a lot more time to expire all their air because they have all that small airway disease that causes obstruction. And as we said, T high and T low, T high tends to be four to six seconds and T low tends to be 0.5 to one second. And this is when you're letting the patient breathe air out when they're in T low. Uh, and as such, that's a really short expiratory time. So these patients really will get air trapping, they'll get breath stacking, auto peep, they'll get more hypercapnic. This is not a good modality for uh, ventilation in patients with obstructive lung disease. Patients with high intracranial pressure, people say, you know, that APRV can lead to higher mean airway pressures that may impair cerebral venous return, so keep an eye on that. Patients with uncontrolled spontaneous breathing with poor synchrony, if you have a patient who's just, you know, ventilating like mad, taking these crazy breaths, they probably won't get along with APRV. Although patients who have um, controlled spontaneous breathing, rather than kind of uncontrolled, huge breaths all over the place, those patients might do okay. But uncontrolled spontaneous breathing, um, they may not get along with APRV. And then hemodynamic instability, you're keeping these patients with high inspiratory pressures, that P high for longer periods of time, aka that T high, and this can lead to some reduced venous return theoretically. Uh, probably not as clinically relevant, but is something that people talk about. Potential complications of APRV. So pneumothoraces, anytime you have someone who you're kind of keeping them at higher pressures, uh, that can lead to bare trauma pneumothoraces. Volume trauma from over distension if you're not really titrating that P high adequately. Auto peep can happen if that T low is too short. So this can be really hard to kind of navigate perfectly uh, because if that T low is too short, so they don't have enough time to expire before you put them back to P high, they can auto peep. But at the same time, you don't want them to fully expire, um, uh, exhale all their air when they're in T low because you don't want them to de-recruit. So you're trying to walk this fine line, uh, which is why this can be a difficult modality for mechanical ventilation. People say those with really severe hemodynamic compromise may not do well with APRV because elevated intrathoracic pressures. Again, this is maybe less um, of a thought, but definitely something to keep in the back of your head. Patient discomfort, 
ND synchrony um, can happen in APRV just like anything else. And then delayed CO2 clearance. This is not a mode that has great ventilation for CO2 removal. This is a mode that has good oxygenation. So if CO2 is the main problem, you do not want to use APRV. How do you monitor and adjust APRV? Okay, we're getting towards the end here. So obviously assess the oxygenation. You can do that with a blood gas. You can do that with oxygen saturation to make sure they are adequately oxygenating. If they are not, you can consider increasing P high, depending on what you're at, but you don't wanna go above 30. You can consider increasing T high to keep them at their P high longer. Or of course you can increase the FiO2 as long as you're um, below 100% because that's the most you can give. Adjust CO2 clearance. So to clear more carbon dioxide, you want to shorten T high. This will allow more frequent releases to P low, right? Because P low, when they go from P high to P low, that's when they ventilate. That's when they exhale. So if you shorten T high, which is the amount of time they're in their P high, that means they'll cycle to P low more often and exhale more often and release more CO2. You can also slightly prolong their T low, right? That's the amount of time they're at their P low which allows for a little more expiratory time. Although again, like we said, you don't want them to fully expire and then de-recruit. Monitor their expiratory flow. So ensure that the T low ends before they have fully exhaled. Most people say to kind of target this 50 to 75% of a full exhalation um, because you don't want that T low to be for 100% of their exhalatory phase because they'll de-recruit. But at the same time, you don't want the T low to be too brief because then they will become more hypercapnic because they'll have less time to exhale air and exchange gas. Watch for auto peep. Uh, make sure that they have an, enough time to exhale at least some air uh, before you put them back into P high. Uh, and that's going to be an adjustment of T low. You might need to increase T low. So increase the length of time they're at their P low to let them exhale more air if they're starting to auto peep. And then you can gradually wean this. Uh, and this is actually kind of nice. You can gradually lower the P high and increase the T high. And that kind of converts it into CPAP to a degree, right? If you march this P high down all the way to a P high of five, and this T high you march up to, you know, uh, most of the respiratory cycle, that essentially just means they're at a five a peep. That's kind of like CPAP. And that helps with some uh, weaning trials. Okay, getting to the end here. What are the key concepts to remember? So APRV. It's time cycled and pressure controlled. Time cycled meaning you have a certain amount of time at their P high and a certain amount of time at their P low. Pressure controlled meaning you set the P high and the P low. You're not setting a tidal volume. So it's time cycled and pressure controlled. It promotes alveolar recruitment, improves oxygenation usually, and does allow for the patient to take spontaneously breaths during APRV. The goal here is to maintain open lung ventilation, right? Keep things recruited. It may be useful in earlier moderate ARDS, but we don't have firm evidence on this yet. I'm sure people are studying it. It does require close monitoring and it does require understanding respiratory mechanics. This is not a modality to just kind of fiddle around with, right? Patients get profoundly hypercapnic. Patients get really high intrathoracic pressure, which, is, which can lead to hemodynamic instability, which can lead to pneumothoraces. Um, these mode is it uh, is not always forgiving. Um, now patients can spontaneously breathe on it, so there is some forgiveness there, but it's not the most forgiving mode. Hopefully that was helpful. That is the quick and dirty on APRV. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have. Subscribe, follow along. Again, check out that Patreon page, weekly newsletter, YouTube page, podcasts, and either way, no matter what, we appreciate y'all. Stay well, keep learning. We hope to see you next time. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on.